Welcome to part two of our interview about the haunted Garnett House Hotel. For everything it has been, a school, doctor's office, brothel, hotel, uh, in, in many different periods of time where some of those things mean very different things than they do today as far as what would have gone on in them. Uh, just just so much, uh, so much energy there. Um, let's go back for a moment uh, and talk about, you had mentioned the Underground Railroad in the area uh, is a part of the property there. For folks who, who don't understand or don't know what the Underground Railroad is, why don't you give us a quick crash course on it? Uh, and and also what would have been going on with the Underground Railroad uh, being a part of the property? Well, the Underground Railroad is was kind of a network set up by abolitionist movement to move slaves, African Americans, out of uh, their slave properties away from, and t- steal them away from their masters, or or help them escape from their masters. And uh, they, what they would do is they would hide these folks in different locations as they moved them on to freedom in the northern states or as far away as Canada. A lot of them did go to Canada because once you got to Canada, you were beyond the reach of any kind of legal system that could bring you back to your master or or overseer or anything like that. So these, the Underground Railroad was pretty much run by the abolitionist movement and like-minded northerners and some southerners, especially in this area, that, that we're helping these people escape and move on. Now, as far as the Garnet House being the center of the Underground Railroad, we think that they are probably meeting there, not only as being an active participant, but pretty sure it was pretty much, as for what I read in the history books, it was a place where they would meet to put in plan as far as where they would take the slaves, where they would get the slaves from, where they would move them to, that sort of thing. And and John Brown, for those who don't know, was was a gentleman who was very much a part of that movement, especially here out west, and eventually decided to do his own raid on a federal armory at Harper's Ferry, where he failed miserably and was hung for the crime. And not too long after being in the region I'm in, so this was a very short period of time that he was operating in this area. Yeah. With this property being everything from a school, like I said, to a doctor's office, hotel, brothel, uh, and who knows what else that may be missing from jail. that. A jail, jail and a jail as well. Um, obviously, we're talking about spirits that probably come from several different eras. Uh, is there a specific era that you feel... A majority of them come from is it uh, a mix of all the different eras what how would you categorize that I think you just have a big onion pretty much which you can peel back layers and probably find a little bit of something from all those eras um, my sense is it's probably mostly 19th century as far as what the activity kind of stems from now there could be some 20th century type activity there as well but i mean i think you have you you have a mix of everything you have so many different eras and so many different uses and so many comings and goings you know we don't know why people might have died of sickness in the area because people would come out from the east and they would in this area there was nothing you know you were living in log cabins up until some of these places were built so they were dying from disease, from the water, all kinds of stuff. You know, all kinds of things were, were killing off folks in the area during that time. So, and with it being a place that they used to treat people, and they had funerals and weddings there as well. I left that out. They, you know, you, you just don't know. I think it just runs the gamut of history. With some of the EVPs that you've caught uh, and, and some of the interactions that you've heard on, on something, I'm assuming something like a, a, a ghost box where you're hearing things being said like, what are, why are they here? What are they looking for? Uh, tell me about some of those conversations, for lack of a better term, uh, and, and, and what you've heard and, and who you think uh, or, or what era you think some of the folks may be from and that uh, are, are more... I guess intelligent or that are, are there and, and kind of standing there watching you just as much as you're intrigued by trying to pick up on them. Yeah, the 
a lot of the EVPs we've gotten have been um, kind of different different spirits. Um, we've picked up on um, men, deep voiced men, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, when we've got women speaking, also children. Like we've had children screaming and EVPs. Now these are captured on voice recorders, not through a spirit box. So this is definitely atmospheric EVPs where the recorders are just picking this up in the middle of the night. Um, we started running them during the day and you would have different commentary on things you were doing. Like I was talking about what are they looking for? You know, what are they up to? Uh, and then just things like I was said, like, just something just tearing the room apart. I mean, it's just loud. And it sounds like chains and water splashing at the same time. It, it's just – there, and there's no water upstairs. That's the thing that's crazy. The water has been cut off to the bathroom upstairs probably for 40 years. So there's nothing up there to even – to generate a water sound. So just – it just kind of runs the gamut. And I really think a lot of it has to do with the hotel era. I really do. Why is that? I just think you just had so much more comings and goings during that era. Because I think during the doctor's office period, they didn't really use the upstairs. It was pretty much used as storage, from what I could tell. It was just where they just threw all the stuff that they didn't use mm -hmm. until we come and threw it all out. Is, is there an area of the building that you would say has more activity than others? Yeah. Um, now, the front of the Garnet House is the the upstairs and the downstairs are the original pieces, the two up, two down, that Mr. Houston built. Um, upstairs, there is a – in that section above, there what we call the ladder room. There is a ladder that goes up to the attic. There is also a closet in that room. And – a lot of activity centers around that area and a, and the stairway that's just out of that room. And then there's another room connected to that that has – that's what we kind of call the middle room. That room as well has had a lot of activity. Um, we stream live on a site called Paranormal Warehouse like once a week from there for four-hour blocks. Our location is on their list of places they stream from because we have IP security cameras because we don't live there. So sure. we, we have to watch the place. Um, so they have they capture a lot of things happen in those streams, those live streams. So like the door slamming open or slamming shut happens um, walking around. You know, we have some dolls and stuff sitting in there. and Some of those get knocked over or uh, knocked off doors and balls, things like that. One thing, though, that's kind of freaky that happened, uh, I had bought this light-up beach ball. Now, I actually got several of them because I gave them to my children to take to Cancun with us. So I had an extra one, so I took it down to the Garnet House. And it's one of those ones when you hit it, it lights up and – you know, that's pretty cool. And so my business partner, the co-owner, Justin, hated kicking it all the time. So he stuck it up in the closet in this ladder room. So we had some a paranormal group come down and they uh, were doing a live benefit for us to help raise money for our foundation. And while they were there, they had a reporter with them from a TV station down around Joplin. And they're in this middle room, and they had like 16 cameras set up on a DVR-type system. But they're sort of broadcasting over YouTube Live. So they're sitting there, and they're talking in this middle room. And in this middle room, you can kind of see through this doorway. You can see the ladder, and you can see the closet, but they're in the room next door. And they're just talking, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, this beach ball flies out of the closet, past the ladder, and rolls in between them freaking them out and they don't know what to think and so they're looking around like what could have caused that this beach ball to fly out of this closet and so they put it back and then it happens again about two hours later in the same night it flies out of the closet so then after that we started getting these frequent camera camera notifications on our 
our security cameras saying, hey, something moved in the ladder room. You'd go look and this beach ball would, have launched, would launch itself out of this closet about once every two weeks. This began to happen, this pattern of this beach ball just throwing itself out of the closet. And, you know, it was infrequent. It, you could never plan on when it was going to happen, but it would. So, and that's kind of one of the weird things that we have go on, you know, on a regular basis. It hasn't done it for a while, but that doesn't mean it won't happen next week. It's just, it's just odd that way. Very much so. You said the building was broken into three pieces. Do you have any, I know you alluded earlier that you weren't exactly fully sure why that happened. Do you have any inkling as to why this this building mysteriously got, got kind of got broken into three different pieces and moved around? I think that the owner probably wanted to split it into private residences. Okay. So there was a building behind it. Now, the we have a garage, and the garage does not look like a modern garage. It's got the same window trim from 1858 as the house does. So we're thinking the garage actually might have been part of the hotel as well. Mm-hmm. It's been moved. There was a house behind the garage that was there when we purchased the Garnet House, but it was open to the elements, and they, the owners of the the Garnet House, gifted it to the church behind us, and they promptly raised it. So that building is gone now. Um, we think that was one section of the hotel because it had all the same. We saw it on Google Maps and on Google. Google Earth, and you could see it looked just like the Garnet House as far as uh, siding and trim and everything else. And we own the lot next door, which is empty. Now, there was a house there, but that was post uh, the Garnet House era. And that house that was there has already since come and gone. But there is a house on the other side of it that has modern siding on it. And we had to go through like the ownership of the properties in the in the town to see who owned the house. And we kind of had to tie it back to the history, who they were saying the names of these people were. And so we found that that house that's there that has modern siding on it might possibly belong to one of the three residents that is mentioned as residing in pieces of the Garnet House. So we think that that building even though it, well, you can kind of peek under the siding and see, oh yeah, that has the, that wooden slats. I'm sorry about that phone. Okay. So with with the the thought that that could be possibly part of the building, have you been able to speak to the owners of that that part of the uh, that that separate building that that house to ask any questions? Yeah, we do know him personally. Um, and we've kind of mentioned it to him. Mm-hmm. Now, they don't live there, so it's kind of sitting empty. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's part of our probably our next phase of research is to kind of figure out, you know, what was – is the, is that a missing piece of the Garnet House mm-hmm. hotel? And, um, you, know, you know, we'd love to go in and take a look just to see the inside. But, uh, you know, I think it is because it's just got the same total – configuration as far as the siding windows everything you know it's it just looks like it and geography wise it would make sense that it, it's not that far away it, it, it's right there it, right. have you brought up any of the paranormal happenings to this uh, individual to see if uh, any of that uh, is, is similar or tied together um he i mean he knows that we have paranormal activity but we've never really discussed you know hey did this your, your old house that is sitting empty, does it have anything that goes on? Mm-hmm. We might, you know, eventually hope to kind of take a look and see if if it does. Because, we, I mean, we definitely know that the Garnet House was way bigger at one time. Mm-hmm. and Because we have the Kansas plot maps that showed it. And, you know, we had probably 14 hotel rooms just disappear, 13 hotel rooms, something like that. Mm-hmm. So where they went, they probably were those buildings. That's interesting. What is your hopes here for the future of the Garnet House now that you are the current uh, caretaker of it? Where do you see it? Where do you want it to be uh, in the future? I kind of like to get it to where the building can open during the daytime and be a be a historic landmark. And I don't, you know, I don't want it to just be a paranormal place. I want it to be 
everything. I would like it to be a step back into the 19th century for the area, for the area, excuse me, and and for the era. Um, I would like to get where you could step in there and say, this is what an Old West boarding house looked like and feel like you've stepped back in time. And not only open it, you know, just at night to investigators, but I want to be able to walk people through, have people visit during the day and, and kind of take a step back in history. I think that would be my eventual hope for it. Uh, there was also, in the early days of the hotel, around the 1860 era, uh, time period, there was a woman who moved to the era, area, excuse me, and her name was Mrs. Her name was uh, Sarah Potter. She was a single lady. She was young. She came to the area. To the area, she was uh, introduced to a gentleman in the area named uh, Mr. Phillips. He was a young farmer, owned a lot of land. She became engaged to him. They got married very soon thereafter. Meeting was as was as what they did back in those times, and she um, suddenly poisoned Mr. Phillips. He died of rabbit poisoning is what they called it. And it, it was found that she had bought two doses of rabbit poison over two different times at the pharmacist to supposedly kill rabbits in the garden. But I guess she gave it to her new husband and he passed away and she fell under suspicion and the sheriff arrested her and the couple that introduced them were arrested, but they were cleared of any wrongdoing. And at the time, they didn't have a jail in the area, so they kept her a prisoner in the Garnet House for four months. Now, she ate dinner communally with everybody else. She could have visitors. And then one night, a mysterious buggy came to town, and Mrs. Phillips disappeared. And she went back east to Cincinnati and married some other guy. And then for some reason, she came back to Kansas. Someone figured out who she was. And they arrested her, and they had a trial for her in Lawrence, Kansas. And she was given a mistrial, and she was let go. And she left the state never to be set, seen again. So we also had a lady that was kind of a black widow murderess who was kept prisoner in the hotel for a period. So it's another little interesting story. That concludes part two of our interview with Robert Garcia about the haunted 1885 Garnett House Hotel. Until next time for the Grave Talks, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thank you for listening.